there are different ways of getting to it. But I think that the moment you say, this is the flag of my ethical position, I think that's where people get defensive because sure. straight away it's like, this is the flag of my ethical position. Therefore, this makes me a good person. And if you're not standing by this Absolutely. flag, the, the, the assumption is no one else is a good person, yeah. which is not helpful. And in many ways isn't true. No. Uh, because there are people that are doing really, really well in, let's say, the LGBT community and, and fighting for those rights, but they might still, you know, eat animals. And I'm not here to say what is right, but there are people with different moral compasses going, yes. you're not an entirely good person because although you're good for this cause, you're not for this. And so for me, it's about unity. It's about helping each other up and realizing that we're all on a journey where we need to better ourselves in different ways. And the way we do that is by having these conversations. And introducing empathy into everything that we do. Absolutely. So that, that's what we have to realize and put as our forefront and runner whenever we're hearing about how other people live and the decisions that they make. And also then having that word, you, you use compassion. But I think that most people don't even have compassion for themselves, let alone worrying about anybody else. So I think we need to amalgamate the two of them and then, you know, and, and work on that. And of course, once you, once you get a bit older, it's hard to do. But I think if, if we try and introduce it, and of course, if you introduce it to young, the young, and I'm not talking about teenage, I'm talking about the very young, the toddlers, the, the small ones, then that's how we see, we, we really start seeing change. It may take a little while, but I do believe that, you know, one day someone will be able to stand by someone who is a vegan or a meat eater and have a conversation and, and break bread together and it's going to be okay. It would be bread. And it would be bread. <laughs> and it would be bread. They'd break bread together and then eat what they wanted, but then it would, you know, yeah. so, uh, you know, that, for me, that's that's the vision that I have. It may not, it, most people probably just think, you know, I feel a bit John Lennon-y here, no. you know, but... But do you think that's Which is the best way? Because he, he, I think he had it right with, you know, with the way he wanted to bring everybody together via music. But yeah. But do you think that's part of the problem is we live in a world where everyone's trying to find their identity yeah, we, and you identify are. with groups of people and ways of thought. And so if we go back to the ethical flag, yeah. that is a part of identity. And if you're not in it, you, we don't, you don't identify with them because you're... And you were talking about intentions and how that's important. Sure. It's not just in terms of your own intentions. It's the assumption that people that don't think like you don't come from a place of good intention. Right. Because intentions are important, but that's not the whole picture. Like you yeah. can have good intentions and deal, still do something bad. Mm. And, and so when people are doing something they think is good, um, people will often think they've done something that I don't agree with. So they must come from a place of bad intention and i think that comes back to the issue of compassion and empathy yeah. and realizing that we've all come from a different journey right people you know these um, abhorrent behaviors don't come out of a vacuum sure. there's a reason everyone is born as a complex slate you know that they're, they're born into a world and they're nurtured in a certain way that teaches them the words that they speak and the thoughts that they have mm. and i think a lot of us just look at someone sometimes and go they're a bad person mm. And I don't think there is such thing. Like, hmm. You don't think there's a, no such thing as a bad person? Correct, yeah. Okay. I, I, I think there are bad actions and bad uh, yeah. behaviours and bad thoughts. And, right. and so, so some people will jump on me and go, oh, so murderers aren't bad people. Like, I, I don't mean to play with semantics, but actually we live in a world where semantics is important. Mm. Of course, um, the actions they've done is bad. And they might be, in our current society, beyond redemption or rehabilitation. I'm not disagreeing with any of that mm. my point is though that if you go for, far enough back in their life there will have been a route that led them to a certain way an experience or an incident yeah that, okay and, and and that goes to the heart of a point i always try and make and i made it on the last episode I'm, i'll probably have to make it on every one you is, will uh, <laughs> explanation is not the same as justification and i think that is something we have to be intellectually honest about of you can explain why things happen and that's mm. not me excusing behavior sure. or saying that you know we should just make a pass because often when you talk about issues of like why did someone steal something from a shop and yeah. someone will go oh so that makes it all right then no it doesn't make it all right but if you just put it in a filing cabinet called bad it's kind of like wiping your hands clean of it saying society has no responsibility to learn why Course, something like this know. happens sure. and um, then and you're not going to break the cycle absolutely. which which is the key of education is to break bad cycles and create good ones oh well, you know what you can go to any prison you know up and down this land and i've worked with young um young young people who have ended up in prison and of course 
whatever led them there, they do all have a story where they've started from. And, you know, it's it's all about the, like you said, re rehabilitation and then realising that, you know what, I, I agree with you. You just made some really seriously, seriously just, you know, uh, I don't even like like to, you know, just just decisions that did led you down the wrong path. And so, you know, I do half agree with you. Sometimes they're not bad people. They're just very, you know, bad decision makers. So, And also, I'm sure we can agree that anyone who does harm to others is harming themselves. You know, if you, you know, if you fall over and you bruise, you know, like that can heal. You know, you still have a scar. You still have a mark. You still have proof that something had happened. And I think we write people off. We say, right, you are now defined permanently as bad. And we also do the opposite. We write people, look at people like Jimmy Savile. Like, you know, people just said, he's so good that he's unassailable, unquestionably good. Until people actually looked and said, actually, no, some of the stuff that he was doing, oh, I was around. And they, they didn't question some of the, the, the trips to hospitals and different things he was doing because they just assumed good. Right. So this assumption that people are holistically one thing, well, none of us in a given day, we do something good, we do something bad. So why would we make an assumption that someone is inherently good or inherently bad? You're right. Yeah, even on the good aspect, it's it's unhelpful. It's, it's, just, it's just all the way unhelpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a great documentary um, we screened for the last BMT event called The Work. And the premise is beautiful. It's set in Folsom Prison in California. And the inmates in there, for whatever reason, again, we look at backstory, politics, whatever, for whatever crimes they've committed, they're doing three times life plus 55 years on top. And how long's life? He's not getting out. No, I get it. No, I know. I know. I'm Effie, like, we're talking about the score on that. No, no, no. It's like, it's foreign to him. I wasn't working him. How old is he going to be when he gets out? Now, the reason I asked was because the life aspect is so bizarre to me. Well, life here is different to life in America. Isn't it 40 years here, life? It depends. Yeah. Sorry, I know that's not important. It was just a... No, 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 it is important. Yeah, it is important. Yeah. I would safely say some of these guys in the documentary will never, ever yeah. leave prison, no. okay? Um, but they've gone through their trauma, whatever they've been accused of, whatever crime they've committed, they're doing their time. But they've gone through a healing process where they've had group therapy and they've come out the other side of group therapy with wisdom. And instead of just sitting there going, what's the point of me being here in prison with all this wisdom? They open up this prison twice a year mm. to people on the outside to come in to have a group therapy session with convicts. Right. And these people come in and what was so amazing watching the documentary was there was more compassion and more humanity and more wisdom and more love coming from these men who will never leave prison than these people who are living in the quote unquote free world. So I'm a huge advocate of redemption and healing. And because that speaks of us when we do things that we think are just beyond the pale. When we have a relationship breakup, we do something to someone we think, oh, I've done something so bad to that person. We hurt ourselves. We damage ourselves by making that assumption that you can't heal, recover, and learn from it. Mm. And I think that's that's one of the, the most important things that unify people. What we judge outside, we judge within. Mm.